All right, guys, <clears throat> if you're just joining us, do me a favor and let me know where you're calling in from. Just type into the question or chat box where you're coming from, and, uh, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm Brock, and uh, I'm joining you today from Washington, D.C., and we've got people from all over the place. We've got Pasadena, New Jersey, Wade, you're also in D.C., that's awesome. Uh, let's see, Ohio, Philippines, everywhere. This is so cool. Toronto, Hollywood, Singapore, Victor from Atlanta, Georgia. And we're all here to learn about color. And, uh, you know, it's it's funny. I have, uh, and some of you guys know about this, but I have a private Facebook group for anybody who's bought the short man style ebook. And I did a little poll inside the group. You know, they're kind of like my VIP insiders. And I asked them, you know, what do you want to learn about? Um, of everything, any any topic that has to do with clothing and style, and overwhelmingly, the response was colors. We want to know which colors to wear, which colors look best on us, and of course, how to match colors. And uh, I think this is a really important topic. If you read uh, my posts and you've read my books, you know that I'm all about fit. I always talk about how clothes should fit, and I say that fit is the most important aspect of style. And uh, I focus a lot on that because it's hard for shorter guys to find clothes that fit. You know, if your clothes don't fit, well, the color doesn't really matter. If they don't fit, it's just not going to look good. But after fit, after you understand fit, color is uh, very, very important. And it's also very confusing. And so we're going to talk about why it's important and why it's confusing. And then uh, we're going to simplify it. So at the end of this, you should have a very good idea of which colors look good on you, and also how to combine colors. Okay, so like how to put together an outfit that has the right combination of colors for your specific uh, body. So color, I always say, is the second most important aspect of style. It's more important than brand or price or you know formality, dressiness, anything like that. Okay, um, not quite as important as fit, but it's still very, very important. And I think the reason that it's so confusing, it's it's pretty simple. There are just so many colors. And it's hard enough to figure out which like basic solid colors look really good on you, but it's even harder to figure out how to combine them. Okay, because once you start combining colors, there are literally infinite possibilities. And we don't have the time or you know the money or the desire to try out all of these different colors and combinations and figure out what works on us. So a lot of guys, they settle for... Uh, you know, a closet full of blue shirts and khaki pants and black suits. And, you know, these colors don't look terrible on anybody. They're kind of like your safest bet. I think that's why a lot of us settle for that. But it, it is worth uh, putting in the extra time and effort to try on different colors and figure out what works for you. And that's what I'm going to help you with today. And the power of color, gentlemen, it's crazy the difference that color can make. This guy... Same dude, uh, two different photos taken about five minutes apart, same lighting, same camera, different colored shirt. That's the only difference here. And look at the difference. Look at his face. So on the left, he's got this kind of pale pink shirt on. And, you know, he probably saw someone wearing a pink shirt and he's like, I can pull that off. Um, and, you know, it's not that he's not confident enough to wear pink or anything like that. It's just that it doesn't work with his skin tone. And it makes him look kind of pale and kind of sickly and washed out, right? But then in this green shirt, he looks healthy and vibrant, young. And the camera picks up on that, okay? So the camera does not lie. That's the difference that the right color can make. Color is very complicated, but when you break it down, it really uh, falls into two categories. You have to understand skin tone and contrast, okay? So... Skin tone is uh, built in. You can't really change it. It's just something that you're born with. Okay, there are actually two types of contrast. There's natural contrast and outfit contrast, and we're going to break each of these down, starting with skin tone. Okay, skin tone, it can also be kind of complicated. If, if, you, uh, if you Google things like, what skin tone am I, or how to find my skin tone, you can go down a serious rabbit hole of information. And most of the stuff that you're going to find is um, it's from like women's magazines and like beauty companies and makeup companies. 
And it's great, you know, some of it's good information, but it's overly complicated. So you're going to find articles that are like, how to find which season you are. Are you a light summer person or a deep winter person? And I don't know about you guys, but I don't really care if I'm a deep winter person. I just want to know what colors to wear. So at the very basic level, okay, skin tone falls into two categories, cool or warm. You're either cool or warm. Now, granted, it's not black or white. A lot of people are somewhere in between, okay? I'm, I'm somewhere in between. I'm what you would call neutral. But it's worth trying to figure out if you're a more uh, cool skin tone person or a more warm skin tone person, and you probably lean toward one direction, okay? So what is skin tone? Let's, let's figure that out first. Skin tone is not how light or dark your skin is. Okay, it's not... Um, you know, are you white or black, or it's not, you know, your ethnicity or really the color of your skin, it's the underlying hue. I know that's a little confusing, but um, it's the underlying color or hue of your skin. So we want to figure out how to figure out our skin tone. And I just want to know, without going any further into it, what do you think your skin tone is? Do you have an idea of whether or not you're a cool skin tone person or a warm skin tone person? All right, we're all over all over the board. A lot of people don't know, that's and that's just fine. A lot of people are pretty sure they're warm, pretty sure they're cool. Warm but not sure. I think I'm warm. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so let's figure this out. If you have cool skin tone, okay, your underlying hue or color is going to be pink or blue. So the tone of your skin, the hue of your skin is going to be pinkish or bluish. You're probably the type of person who gets sunburned easily, okay? You probably don't tan very easily, or maybe it takes you a long time to get tan. Okay, one good test is if you look at your veins, and try to look at your, your veins like on the inside of your arm or like on your wrist, they probably have a bluish tint to them, a bluish tint, maybe even purplish. Cool skin tone people tend to have blue, gray, or green eyes, okay? Not always, but that's just uh, what they tend to have. And um, silver metals tend to look better on their skin. So this is another test you can do. So you probably have in your home uh, like a silver medal and a gold medal, like maybe a belt buckle or a watch or a bracelet or a necklace. And you can go get both of them, hold them against your skin, and see which one looks better. And it's not about which one you like more. It's about which one looks better against your skin, which one makes your skin glow and look healthier. Okay. In the same way, there are different types of whites. And if you're a cool skin tone person, pure white, like snow white, is going to look better than off white, or like the ivory cream type colors. So those are two tests you can do. Okay. So after, after we've gone over this, so using the silver metal test or the pure white test or looking at your veins, does anybody now, is anybody certain that they have cool skin tone? And it's okay if you're not. Okay, I, I see some yeses. That's good. Nice. Kevin is positive. He's a cool skin tone person. That's awesome. And Michael, you're less certain than you are. That's fine too. Okay, let's talk about warm skin tone. So if you have warm skin tone, the underlying color or hue is yellow, gold, or orange. Okay, you probably get tan in the sun. Or at the very least, you don't burn easily. If you do the vein test, you look at your veins, they're probably going to be more greenish than bluish. And if you can't tell, well, you're probably somewhere in between. But if you have warm skin tone, you most likely have eyes that are brown, hazel, or amber in color. And instead of silver metals, gold metals are going to look easier against your skin. They're going to they're gonna gel more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Similarly, off-white and ivory is going to be a better shade for you. It's going to make your skin uh, stand out more and look healthier as opposed to like a pure white. Okay, so who is positive that they have warm skin tone? All right, Kevin, you say definitely warm. Awesome. Bob is probably cool. Very cool. Seems like a lot of people have a good idea of what kind of skin tone they have. Now, here's the thing. What does this mean? It's great that we know what our skin tone is. What does this actually mean for what colors we wear? Well, it's very simple. If you have warm skin tone, you're going to look better in warmer colors, and if you have cool skin tone, you're going to look better in cool colors. 
And yes, Brian, uh, you can be both. You can be in between. A lot of people are. I'm in between. Okay. But in general, if you're on the warmer side of the spectrum, you're going to look better in warmer colors. And if you take a color wheel, um, you can literally just divide it right in the middle and the colors on one side fall into the warm family and the colors on the other side fall into the cool family. Let's look at an example. So two of my favorite stylish short guys. Okay, Elijah Wood, classic cool skin tone kind of guy. Um, he's got a sort of like pink under uh, underlying hue to his skin, light blue eyes. He's a fair skin guy and he looks really good in blue colors. Uh, any shade of blue, he looks really good in. Now you take Aziz Ansari on the other hand, another very dapper short guy. Uh, he's got this kind of golden yellow glow to his skin. That's why he looks so good with that gold bracelet and that yellow shirt. Now, keep in mind, guys, I'm not saying that Aziz Ansari can't wear blue. Okay, He wears blue all the time and he looks good. You know, He's not going to wear a yellow suit, of course. He's going to wear a blue suit. But he's going to look even better if he incorporates a warm color into his outfit. Okay, so if he's wearing that navy blue suit, he's going to look really good if he wears a yellow shirt or a yellow tie or something warm. But look at look what happens when you take a person with very cool skin tone and they wear very warm colors. See, Elijah Wood has kind of pale skin. He's a fair skinned guy. And it's not that he looks terrible in yellow. It's just that it's not doing anything for him. You know, he looks pale kind of in a bad way, in my opinion. He's got a, a pallor to his skin, and it almost looks a little sickly against that yellow. Same with the red. It's just not putting his best foot forward. You know, it's, you wouldn't see him in this yellow shirt and be like, oh, what are you thinking? But he could look better. And he does look a lot better when he wears blue. Um, the blue looks great against the uh, pink hue of his skin. It brings out his eyes, and uh, he just looks a lot healthier, a lot more natural. Gentlemen, my challenge to you would be to try on a yellow shirt, because I think a lot of us have closets full of cool colors. That's what's available. That's what we end up with. And we actually never uh, consider the fact that we might be a warm skin tone person. Uh, this is Dave Franco. He's 5'7", um, and he looks really bad in blue, you know? His, his skin looks kind of chalky and kind of pale, and he doesn't look healthy. But when he puts on yellow, it just makes his skin uh, glow. It really brings out like the orange undertones. He looks really good. So I would say to you, try on a yellow or an orange shirt. And it might look better than you think. And if it doesn't look good, that's fine. That means you have cool skin tone. But I would try on a yellow shirt and a blue shirt. Maybe take a photo of each one and make sure you have good natural lighting. And look at them and just be honest with yourself. Which one really makes your skin pop? It looks, you know, makes your skin look healthy and natural. And you can even ask someone else. You can ask a friend, um, girlfriend, you know, uh, which one they think you look better in. And you might be surprised. And keep in mind, I don't want you to think that, you know, if you're a warm skin tone person, you can only wear warm colors. And if you're a cool skin tone person, you can only wear cool colors. Because the reality is most colors come in uh, cool and warm hues. So there are some colors that are like inherently uh, very warm, like orange is like a very warm color. Um, blue is is a very cool color, but most colors are available in both different hues. So like, for example, I love the color green. I love wearing green. And I'm not going to not wear green just because I have, you know, a certain type of skin tone. I'm going to find the green that works for me. So if you look at these greens, the cool greens have more blue in them while the warm greens have more yellow in them. Okay, so I would encourage you to not uh, rule any colors out, but when you're shopping and when you're picking out outfits, try to find the types of colors that work with your skin tone. So if you love you know, yellow, you love red, that's fine. You can wear those colors. Just be cognizant of whether it's a warm version of red or a cool version of red, okay? And uh, you know, to your question, Wade, about brown, Brown is the same. There can be cool browns and warm browns. Same with gray, okay? A gray that has a lot of blue, that has kind of a blue tint to it, that's a cool gray. But a gray that has more of a yellow to it, that's a warm gray. The stuff is subtle, guys, but it's, it's powerful. Okay. Let's talk about contrast. So 
Contrast is the second component uh, of color. And if you understand skin tone and contrast, you will be a color matching pro. Okay, and you'll be ahead of like 95% of guys out there. Um, skin tone is about, you know, what colors look best on you. Contrast is about how to combine colors. And we're going to break contrast down into the types of contrast and then contrast levels. So let's get into it. What is contrast? This is pretty self-explanatory, but it's just the difference between colors. So contrast is just the difference between colors. And, uh, you know, this guy uh, here, this is uh, Anthony from the Closet Freaks blog. Really stylish dude. Definitely check out his stuff if you want some uh, outfit ideas. He's wearing a very high contrast outfit because, you know, black and white, that's about as high contrast as you can get. And the greater the difference between two colors, the higher the contrast. So there's a high contrast outfit. Now, the two types of contrast are natural and what we're gonna call outfit contrast. Your natural contrast is the contrast that's just, that you're born with, okay? It's, it's occurring on your body. We're really talking about your face. So the difference between your hair color, skin color, you know, eyebrows, eyes, lips, teeth, that's all contrast that you can't really control. You're just kind of born with it. It's natural. Outfit contrast, on the other hand, is in your control, and that's the contrast well, in your outfit. So it's the contrast between uh, two different pieces of clothing or within uh, one piece of clothing. So for example, outfit contrast could be uh, the difference in color between your shirt and your pants. Or if you have a striped shirt, it could be the difference between one stripe and the next stripe. So let's talk about natural contrast. Conan O'Brien is a classic low natural contrast guy. Dude is like a ghost, you know? So his hair, and his skin and his eyes, eyebrows, lips, they're all very light. So there's not a lot of natural contrast going on on his face. He's a low natural contrast guy. Beck, okay, one of my favorite musicians, is also a low contrast kind of guy. Light hair, light eyes, light eyebrows, light lips, fair skin. Then we get into the mid or medium natural contrast levels. A guy like Jonah Hill. He's a medium contrast guy. He's got darkish hair, lightish skin, but it's not nearly as extreme as like Conan O'Brien or Beck. A lot of us fall into this category, this kind of middle ground, this mid natural contrast. That's that's what I am. I'm, I'm a medium natural contrast guy. Okay, Mark Wahlberg is another good example of a right right down the middle of the road natural contrast guy. Darkish hair, lightish skin, you know, uh, but not nearly as extreme as uh, Conan O'Brien or Beck. Then we get into our high natural contrast. Okay, this is Kit Harington, uh, stars in Game of Thrones. Very cool, very stylish dude. He's got really dark hair, really dark eyebrows and eyes, dark facial hair, but light skin. So he's got a lot of contrast going on naturally in his face. Okay, he's a high contrast individual. Similarly, you take Kevin Hart, okay, happens to be 5'2", by the way, and hilarious. Uh, he's a high contrast guy. And this one's a little tricky. I wanted to include him because if you have dark skin and dark hair, you might think that you're a low contrast person. But because of the white in your eyes and teeth, you're actually a high contrast person. Okay? So keep in mind, if you have dark skin and dark hair, you can still be a high contrast person like Kevin Hart here. So which are you? Are you a high, medium, or low contrast person? This one should be a little easier than skin tone. Just leave a comment. Which one are you, high, medium, or low? All right, we have, we, we're representing all contrast levels in the house today. We have a lot of mediums, a lot of lows, a lot of highs, mostly mediums, and that makes sense. Then we have outfit contrast, right? So you know that you're a high, low, or medium natural contrast person. Now let's talk about outfit contrast. So this is an example of a low contrast outfit because I'm wearing dark blue pants, dark gray jacket, dark gray shirt, gray shoes, there's not a lot of contrast going on inside of this outfit. This is a high contrast outfit, okay? White shirt, uh, you know, dark blue shorts, that's about as high contrast as it gets. Here's some more examples of uh, outfit contrast. So you're going to have your lower outfit contrast on the left and then moving into high contrast on the right. 
So what does this mean for us? Okay, what well, we know our contrast levels, we understand outfit contrast. What do we do with this info? Well, the rule of thumb, and again, this is not a, a set in stone rule, this is a guideline, but the rule of thumb is that you should match your contrast levels. So match your outfit contrast level to your natural contrast level. Okay, say this a different way. If you're a high contrast person, naturally, if you have a lot of contrast in your face, you're gonna look really good when you wear outfits that have a lot of contrast built in. If you're a low contrast person, you're gonna look better if you wear low contrast outfits. And we're gonna get into this one a little bit too, because I know this can be a little bit confusing. So here's an example of high and medium contrast guys wearing low contrast outfits. And as you can see, it's just not really uh, doing much for them. So like Elijah Wood is a medium contrast person and he's wearing a low contrast outfit and it gives the effect of, it kind of makes it look like your face or your head is just kind of floating there. It's unbalanced, you know? Same with uh, Dave Franco down here. He's a high contrast person. He's got dark eyebrows, dark hair, light skin. And when he wears a low contrast outfit like this white shirt, it kind of just washes him out and it just doesn't look balanced. Same with Jonah Hill. He's a medium contrast person. And this pink shirt, low contrast pink shirt is not really helping him. On the other hand, you can have too much contrast. So you have Daniel Craig, all right, i.e. James Bond, and he's a low contrast guy. He's got blonde hair, blue eyes, light skin, and he's wearing a very high contrast outfit. Okay, not only is his suit contrasting heavily with his uh, shirt, but he's also got this pocket square that has a lot of contrast built into it. And the effect here is that your eyes are drawn away from his face to his outfit. They're drawn to these uh, jarring lines, these contrast lines that are built into his outfit. And uh, it's not really flattering him. It's not a flattering look for him, even though the suit fits. Jonah Hill, he's got this crazy tie on, and you can't help but look at the tie. Your eyes keep going back to his tie. Just try to focus on his face. It doesn't work. It takes effort. And that's the opposite of what we want to do. We want people to look at our face. And then Mark Wahlberg here, you know, we're not going to talk about this outfit. We're just going to give him a pass because he's a cool guy. Now, here's some examples of guys doing it right. You have Kevin Hart. He's a high-contrast individual. He's wearing a high contrast outfit, not to mention the uh, gold jewelry, which looks awesome with his skin tone. Dave Franco, high contrast guy, high contrast outfit. Ralph Lauren, who happens to be 5'6", uh, wearing that monochromatic low contrast outfit, which goes perfect with his natural contrast levels. And then, of course, Jonah Hill, medium contrast guy, medium contrast outfit. And just compare that with the guys in the previous slide. Uh, these guys look much more natural, much more balanced. Your eye can go up and down their body without uh, any problem, and uh, your eye naturally goes to their face because their contrast level is uh, fluid and uniform throughout their entire look. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. You're thinking, I thought you told us that short men should avoid contrast in general at all costs because it might make you look shorter. And this is true, all right? In, in the Dress Taller uh, PDF book, um, I did say that you should avoid certain types of contrast, but it's not all contrast in general. It's the type of contrast that cuts you in half visually. So, for example, wearing a white shirt and black pants, that cuts you in half visually. Okay, so that's, that's an example of contrast that's uh, probably not uh, the most flattering look for a shorter man. The key is, if you want to add contrast to your outfit, to do it in the details. So for example, this t-shirt has contrast built in because it has that graphic on it. Similarly, I'm wearing white shoes, right? So that uh, that's a little way to add contrast. Now, if this shirt didn't have that graphic on it, and if my shoes were, say, dark gray, this would be a very low contrast outfit. Some other examples for adding contrast in the details. You can use your tie, okay? Little things like the buttons or your um, uh, buttonholes, contrasting thread on the buttonholes, okay? You can throw on a jacket or a sweater, shoes, glasses, okay? You can add contrast in subtle ways versus, um, you know, 
more obvious ways. Gentlemen, when you put all this stuff together, it is amazing the results that you can get. Okay, I use Jonah Hill a lot, and poor guy, you know, sometimes he gets it right, sometimes he doesn't, and I feel like I use him a lot for examples of what not to do, but look what happens when he gets it right. This is the perfect outfit for Jonah Hill. And the reason being, okay, he's matching his contrast level, so he's a medium contrast guy, he's wearing a medium contrast outfit, he's got very cool skin tone, and he's wearing cool colors. Okay, that blue and the purple, they're very cool colors. Additionally, as a shorter guy, he's got small scale patterns, which are perfect for shorter, smaller guys. Okay, the checks on his jacket, the polka dots on the tie, the stripes on the shirt, they're all small in scale. He's also got pops of color, this bright blue that bring out his eyes. So here's a little pro tip, if you wanna bring out your eyes, you can add color that's just a little bit darker than your eyes. That's a good way to bring out your eyes. He's also got a spread collar, which is perfect for his kind of wider face and a half Windsor knot, which is again, the perfect knot is the right proportion for his width, for his neck and his chest. And you know, when you look at this outfit, like if you saw him walking down the street, you wouldn't think, wow, look at the contrast levels on that guy. Like you, you don't really know why he looks good. He just does. You know, and most people will never understand why, but um, gentlemen, a lot of this has to do with his contrast levels and, uh, and the fact that he's wearing the right colors for his skin tone. So uh, let's take some questions um, before we get into the next section here. Do you have any questions about contrast? Okay, Wade, would you recommend using a larger pattern to offset a small pattern? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, pattern matching is is kind of a... A science and an art in general um, you know you should use smaller patterns on the clothes that are closer to your body so if you want to uh, if you want to wear an outfit that has multiple patterns um, and say you're wearing a shirt and a jacket okay you can wear and actually this outfits a perfect example so his shirt has stripes and uh, they're very small in scale they're very thin and close together and his jacket has checks now it's, they're also small in scale but they're bigger in scale than the shirt, okay? So this is a good example of uh, pattern matching. Um, you know, I would recommend it if you're new to it, I would recommend doing one pattern per outfit and then going from there. But for, you know, for shorter guys in general, you should avoid large scale patterns. All right, let's see, Victor, can you redefine outfit contrast? Yeah, so outfit contrast is... Uh, it's basically two, it, it can be two different things. It's contrast between two different items of clothing. So it could be the difference in color between your shirt and your pants, okay? But it's also the contrast within one item of clothing. Like this tie, for example, has some contrast in it because it has those bright dots on it and against the dark red background, they contrast. So it could be between two different items of clothing or within one item of clothing. Okay, Ben is asking about uh, eye color and uh, using a darker color. Yeah, so if you have light blue eyes, uh, like Jonah Hill here, and you want to bring out your eyes, the natural color of your eyes, you can incorporate something into your outfit that's just a little darker, so like medium blue. And that's what he's done here with the polka dots on his tie and also with the checks on the suit. So uh, another example would be like if you have, say, like hazel eyes, you could wear, uh, you know, like a medium or darker green pocket square. Thomas says, is it better to wear patterns closer to the body and solids on the outside? Yeah, in general, you're going to want to wear patterns closer to the body. So that, that that's a good rule of thumb. Um, but again, you, you can wear patterns on the outside, but the patterns on the outside should be larger in scale. So it's not going to look good if you have, you know, if you have a shirt that has big polka dots on it and then a jacket that has really small checks. Okay, Michael says, my beard and hair are going salt and pepper, still generally dark, but patches growing out in gray, so I have to factor this in. Yeah, yeah, factor that in. I mean, if you have like a salt and pepper beard, you're probably a medium contrast guy. Uh, you know, it, it depends where you are in the in the stages, I guess, of, of going gray. Um, but if you have like salt and pepper type hair, you're probably a medium contrast kind of guy. 
which is cool because you can you know you can you can kind of play you can kind of go both ways on that so that's actually a good thing so let's see chan says i have white yellow asian skin and dark hair i'm not sure if it's medium or high contrast you are probably a high contrast person okay um i think of a, a classic high contrast asian guy as bruce lee you know he has really really dark like jet black hair and um kind of that white yellow uh skin tone and he's a high contrast person so if you're if you're tan if you're tanner then you might be a uh a medium contrast, but you are most likely a high contrast person. Nicholas says, can you lower the contrast between two opposing colors by wearing toned down, less saturated versions of them? Absolutely. And that's a great point. Um, if you wear less saturated, less rich versions of colors, then that will tone down the contrast. Okay. Adam says, the information you provide regarding skin tone and contrast makes sense. What about matching multiple colors within the outfit? while taking into account skin tone. Yeah, that, that gets a little more into color schemes. Um, so, you know, you can wear different color schemes regardless of your skin tone. So, for example, if, um, you know, I really like analogous color schemes. So I like wearing colors that are closely related, but not necessarily monochromatic. So rather than wearing uh, a light blue shirt and dark blue pants, I might wear a blue shirt, gray pants, and you know a dark blue tie or a dark blue jacket and that's uh an analogous color scheme and but they're all cool tones you know what i mean so um so yeah you have to kind of look at color schemes and then within that scheme you should make sure that the tones of the colors are uh, aligned with your natural skin tone joe says i have black pants and a neat white shirt how can i make it work well if you want to wear a white shirt and black pants um, i would recommend wearing a jacket as well so I'm assuming you probably have a black jacket that you could wear with that. And uh, that, you know, keeping the jacket on makes it so you're not really cutting yourself in half visually, um, but you still have a lot of contrast built in there. Okay, what contrast would I be? Medium brown skin, black hair. You would be a medium contrast person. What about a tie that has a larger pattern than the shirt? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, and you can play around with ties. You know, you can get away with a little more uh, uh, with ties. Um, than you can with like shirts and jackets, but yeah, wearing wearing a tie with a larger pattern than your shirt pattern, that's totally fine. Okay, and we have uh, let's see a bunch more questions. I'm not gonna get to all of them, guys, but I will definitely follow up with an email uh, to any unanswered questions. Let's let's do one more and then we'll move on. How do we contrast properly during the summer when we are expected to wear light colors? That is the perfect question for the next section of this presentation. Uh, thank you for asking that. So. This is my go-to warm weather, summer color combination. Anybody can wear it. It works for every occasion. You can wear it to the beach. You can wear it to a wedding. And you probably already have the clothes to create this, uh, this outfit. And gentlemen, I'm talking about white and tan. This is a great outfit for any contrast level, any skin tone, because tan can be a warm or cool color. White can be a warm or cool color, OK? Um, this is the perfect building block. It has some contrast, but not a lot of contrast. You can play with the contrast levels like Kit Harrington here in that middle picture. That's uh, more contrast than, for example, the outfit that I'm wearing, but it's the same basic colors. Um, this is a great outfit. And the cool thing is you can build on this outfit. So if you're a high contrast, cool skin tone person, throw on a blue blazer and a pink tie right, with this outfit. If you're a low contrast, warm skin tone person, complete it with a, you know, a tan jacket and a yellow tie. So this is like the perfect building block um, color combination for uh, your warm weather outfits. It, it'll work all year long, but it's, it's a really good warm, uh, warm weather uh, color combination because it has this sort of like um, summery, casual, kind of like safari, adventurous look to it and uh honestly gentlemen you cannot go wrong with this so when in doubt wear white and tan and uh i'm willing to bet that you guys probably already have clothes in your closet to create this outfit so gentlemen i told you i had an announcement very excited because you guys are literally the only ones hearing about this you know the thing is i love you know blogging and writing blog posts and writing ebooks and you know i have the short man style ebook the dress taller ebook and 
They've been downloaded over 15,000 times, which just like blows my mind and makes me feel really good. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's only so much you can do. There's only so, uh, so much you can uh, do for people and help people by giving them information. And I've been trying to figure out how can I, you know, help you guys in a more hands-on personalized way. And really like I wanted to do something that has a lot of uh, accountability built in. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I was wondering how I can help you in a way that surrounds you with other guys who are just like you, uh, kind of like a peer group, wanted to give you access to me, right, which you don't really get with a book. And uh, ultimately, like, I want to help you guys take action on the things that you learn and get fast, tangible results. So with all that stuff in mind, I've decided for the first time ever to do a live training program. And it's, uh, it's going to be three weeks, and it's uh, going to be held via webinar just like we're doing this today. It's going to be June 16th, 23rd, and 30th, but everything will be recorded, so it's okay if you miss a lesson. And we're basically, we're going to spend an hour uh, talking about different topics like color and fit and body types, and then you're going to get an assignment, and we'll follow up later in the week and talk about that assignment. And uh, we're going to have a private Facebook group just for students, and you know we're going to be able to uh, Skype with each other and get outfit critiques and ask me questions. And, um, you know, since this is the first time I'm doing this, I'm uh, opening enrollment to just 50 students because I want to keep the class size kind of small. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. You know, the reason that it's $79 is because I want your help. I want your feedback. And I want to make sure that, you know, this is something that's super helpful to you guys, something that, um, you know, that you want. And so this first kind of pilot group of students uh, is kind of my, uh, you know, you're kind of my partners in crime, you're in it with me and I'm going to ask you for your feedback. And that's why, uh, it's just $79. So later on when I do this again, uh, you know, later in the year, it's definitely going to be more expensive because it's such a time consuming thing for me. But right now, uh, it's just $79. And like I said, you guys are the only people that know about this. Um, if you're interested, check out that URL, themodestman.com slash class. And, uh, you know, you can email me with questions. You can ask questions. Uh, right here in the chat box. I'm going to stay online for a while. And uh, and there's a phone number at the bottom of that page. So you can also call me. All right. So uh, feel free to ask any questions about this class or about the training. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. And I'm going to be hanging out here. So uh, so yeah, enjoy the rest of your day and, uh, and let's chat. Crombie, you said, I really hope you do this again and make it available during different times. Yeah, absolutely. I will do this again and I will make it available during different times. Um, this was kind of the first one. And since we got such a good response, we had a full house today. Uh, I'll definitely be doing it again. Henry says, going the Antonio Centeno route. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm definitely following in his footsteps. He's, he's kind of a mentor of mine and, uh, and he offers some great training. So I'm trying to do that. The difference is I'm focusing just on shorter men and uh, no one else is doing that. Ben, you say, what about ruddy fair skin? If you have ruddy fair skin, you are probably a cool skin tone person. So if you're out, if you're outside in the cold weather and uh, and you get like a pink kind of glow to your cheeks, then you are probably a cool skin tone person. Joe King says lots of info. Thanks, Brock. You are very welcome, Joe. Felix, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us from Nigeria. That is awesome. You're very welcome, AJ. Very welcome, John. Ben. Tyler, thanks for signing up, brother. Uh, Brad says, what time of day would the class be offered? If you can't make it, can you submit questions in advance? Absolutely. So it's going to be offered in the evening. Uh, I'm thinking 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you can't make it, you can definitely ask questions in advance. Or you can um, watch the recording and then email me questions. And we can, uh, we can talk like that. You're very welcome, Thomas. Kevin, what time will classes be? Yeah, probably evening time uh, Eastern. How is StyleCon? Good question. StyleCon was amazing. StyleCon was awesome. And uh, definitely try to get there if you can next year. It was, it, there's nothing like it. You're very welcome, Michael. You're welcome, Nick. Thanks for joining me. Kevin, just signed up. Awesome. Thank you, sir. JT, you're welcome. Ben says, what did you lecture about at StyleCon? So at StyleCon, I talked about fit. I talked about how clothes should fit. Um, and, uh, you know, the three most common fit mistakes and how you can avoid them. So it was all about how clothes should fit. Michael says, is in the class any focus on shorter, heavier guys? We're definitely going to talk about body type. So it's not going to be focused on, um, you know, heavier guys in general, but we're going to talk about 
um, you know, th there will be a, a lesson on uh, body type and, and what that means, you know, if you have a heavier body type or a, uh, you know, a skinny body type or a built body type. Henry says, this is awesome. Want to help contribute. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to support the Modest Man, definitely you can buy the ebook. You can sign up for the class. Someone asked me, where did I learn this information? I learned this information the hard way. <laughs> and uh, you can you can go see, there's a post on, on the Modest Man called, uh, uh, I think it's called How I Used to Dress or, or Stop Wearing Clothes That Don't Fit. And there's pictures of me of how I used to dress. And you'll see that I was not always a stylish guy, okay? I used to dress horribly. And uh, you can go check that out. Okay, Chan says, for high contrast Asian skin tone, would you say gray or navy you would get for your per for your first suit? Okay, so your first suit, you got a high contrast skin tone. I would go for gray or navy. Either one is fine. But if you, if you do gray, don't do light gray. Do like a medium to darker gray. So I would do like a medium gray or a navy, whichever one you like better. Keep in mind, gray is going to make you look older and navy is going to make you look younger. Franklin, just signed up for the class. Thank you, sir. I will be seeing you there. Uh, let's see, another question. Do you happen to know the formality of black square-toed shoes? To be honest, I would stay away from square-toed shoes. Um, if you're going to get black shoes, like black dress shoes, I would get like an Oxford or something that uh, has a tapered rounded toe, but I would stay away from square-toed shoes. Uh, they're something that goes in and out of style, and they're uh, you know somewhat trendy. And, uh, you know, shoes can last a long time. You don't want them to, you don't want to buy a pair of shoes that's going to look outdated in a couple of years. So I would stay away from, from any square toed shoes, black or any other color. All right. And I'm already starting to see a bunch of people signing up for the course, which is very cool. Michael all signed up. Looking forward to it. Yes, sir. I am looking forward to it as well. AJ says, what times are the class? It's going to be, uh, in the evenings, so like after work. Eastern time, Eastern Standard Time, so like New York, D.C. time, um, so probably 7 p.m. Eastern time, and it's June 16th, 23rd, and 30th. Hey, AJ, yeah, so if you have work, if you can't make one of the classes, uh, basically, I'm going to post a recording, so you'll be able to uh, watch the recording, and then me and you can have a follow-up uh, email discussion or Skype discussion to make sure all of your questions are answered. So it's not a big deal if you can't make one of the classes. Jay says, some people say cool colors can flatter warm skin. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's not an exact science. You have to experiment. Um, in general, cool colors are going to look better with cool skin, but um, I definitely encourage experimentation because most of us fall somewhere in between the warm and cool uh, skin tone spectrum. Henry says, what do you think about Uniqlo? How about JCPenney? Uh, these stores that have sales every day. Yeah, you know, Uniqlo's Uniqlo is good. It's I think it's better than most brands for shorter guys. I mean, their stuff, their slim fit stuff is definitely slim. You know, my problem with Uniqlo is like a lot of their shirts are still too long. So I like them. You know, it's it's a good price. I think it's it's cool, like basic clothing, but like a lot of their shirts are still too long. J.C. Penney, you know, last time I was in J.C. Penney, I was really impressed with what they have. I mean, they had the whole Nick Wooster thing for a while. Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't really know what's going to happen with JCPenney. I, I hope they keep doing what they're doing, but um, but yeah, I think they are kind of going backwards. Uh, someone just asked, do you ever think that the modest man will become your full-time job? Well, uh, it actually is my full-time job. Uh, I, I left my, my day job back in January, and I'm focusing on the modest man 100% now. Okay, AJ says, what brand do you usually find good sizes for short guys? Well, you know... There's a lot of different brands. I mean, basically any any major brands, like for me at least, I have to get stuff tailored. There are some brands that are uh, focusing specifically on shorter guys. Um, Peter Manning, Jax Everett. There's a new one called Ash and Anvil. It's just about to come out. Um, so definitely check out those brands that are focusing exclusively on shorter guys. Philip says, what is your opinion on the original Penguin? Unique styles and colors, but can, can it fit? Yeah. I like Penguin. I like the styles and colors. Um, again, you know, like every other brand, it has a lot of the same problems and that a lot of the clothes are too long. But um, I think as far as, you know, style, color, and 
the other aspects of the fit, I, I, I like, I have some penguin clothes. I have a, uh, like a shirt from them and a couple ties. Franklin says, wondering what your thoughts on biker style boots, the ones that reach just under the calves for shorter guys. I love those kinds of boots. I, I like boots that they go up a little higher. I have a couple pairs of boots that, uh, that are, you know, considered high boots. They're great. And P says he's you're building an online business as well. That's awesome. I would love to talk to you about that. Just, uh, send me an email. Okay, I hear you. I hear your comments about the later classes. I will definitely keep that in mind, and we'll we'll try to make the class time a little bit later. Someone asked, when did I stop growing? I'm 16, pushing 17, five three. You know, man, I stopped growing. Probably I stopped getting taller. Probably like. I don't know, late high school. Um, my body type changed a little bit. You know, I got, uh, I added some muscle. I, I, you know, in high school I was, I was short, but I was like really, really skinny. Um, so I've, I've bulked up a little bit since then, but I probably stopped growing around then. Um, I probably hit about five, five and a half, five, six, and I stopped growing. So don't worry about it, man. Five, three is nothing wrong with that. Okay, you might you might grow more, you might not, but either way, um, you know it's it's not about your height. You can't control your height, so you got to uh, focus on the things that you can control, like dressing well. Wait, are we never supposed to mix and or contrast warm tone and cool toned colored clothing together in the same outfit? Not necessarily. In fact, um, you know if you're going for like a monochromatic color scheme, which is kind of fun to experiment with. You can play with warm and cool tones. I mean, like a warm and a cool blue or a warm and a cool green. Um, with with anything like that that's kind of like, you know, breaking the rule, I would say that try to master the rule first and really understand it. And then once you understand it, then you can break it. <laughs> so, you know, don't um, – so I'd say first, like, figure out your skin tone and, um, you know, figure out what colors work best for you. And, like, if you have warm skin tone, try to wear warm colors. And then after that, then you can start to uh, experiment with mixing tones. And if you fall somewhere in between, you know, if you're warm, if you if you have neutral uh, skin tone, then yeah, you can definitely play with um, warm and cool tones in the same outfit. Okay, Franklin, following up on the biker boots question, you've seen it recommended to tuck tuck jeans into boots for more of a bad boy look. Does that work well for shorter men? I'm going to be honest, man. I am not a fan of tucking pants into shoes, like tucking jeans into boots. I don't think that's a good look. Um, I do like rolling my jeans, like uh, rolling my jeans to have a little cuff on them, but I don't really like tucking them in. I think that's, uh, first of all, I don't really think it's comfortable, you know, and I think it's kind of, uh, I think it kind of looks sloppy and it's, it's kind of like a trendy look. It comes in and out of trends and, uh, yeah, so so it's, I'm not a huge fan of it, but if you like that look, you know you should definitely do it. So, Wade, thanks, Brock. Great seminar. Thank you, sir. When can desert boots be worn? Desert boots can be worn all the time. <laughs> I love I love desert boots. Um, or uh, uh, you know, like uh, ankle boots, also called chukas. They're they're great. Uh, they're super versatile. Um, I probably wear my uh. I have a pair of um, J. Crew McAllisters. They're they're gray suede uh, desert boots, and then I have a pair of Cole Haan um, brown leather desert boots. And I between those two shoes, I mean, those are like my two most versatile pairs of shoes. You can wear them with jeans, chinos. Probably shouldn't wear them with like trousers or suits. Jonas says I have olive skin. Should I stay away from beige, brown, like a camel coat in the winter? That's a good color. Um, I mean, sorry, that's a good question. Uh, if so, if you have olive skin, you're probably a warm skin tone person, probably. Although, not necessarily. You still have to do the metal test and look at your veins and all that stuff. But if you are a warm skin tone person, um, no, you're going to look good in in beige and brown and camel. Definitely, don't shy away from those colors. Henry says, "Tell us about how dressing well changes the way you are perceived by your peers." Yeah, I mean, dressing well, you know, this is kind of what I talked about at StyleCon. Um, we don't dress well just to dress well. You know, it's not like a, a vain, shallow thing. Um, it's, it's about, yes, how other people perceive us, but more importantly, how we perceive ourselves. 
and it's about your self-image and your self-worth, you know, which is a very complicated thing. And a lot of the uh, a lot of the factors that kind of influence how you, your self-worth, um, how you perceive yourself, are outside of your control. You know, things like your height and your IQ and uh, who your parents were and your skin color and all these things. But uh, dressing well is something that's totally inside of our control. And that's why I think that it's so important to focus on. Um, and when you start dressing well, yes, you will be perceived differently. Um, you're going to get more attention. People are going to look at you more. Uh, you're going to see more competent. You're definitely going to start to feel more confident. And when people treat you differently, it kind of has this um, exponential effect. Like the first time, like I noticed that when I started dressing well, people ask me for directions a lot more. So like I get stopped and asked for directions all the time now. And it's really weird. And I was like, why is this happening? It's because I'm dressing well. And I just seem like a person who has his act together and who's trustworthy. People trust to point them in the right direction. And when that starts happening, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a very cool, uh, at first it's kind of weird. You're like, wow, why is this happening? And then, then you realize that it's because, you know, of how you dress and how you look and, uh, and you start to get really confident. So, um, yeah, dressing well is, you know, it, when I say that it, it can really like change your life, I mean, that's not just being dramatic. It really can have a huge impact on your life. Okay. Philip asks, with summer around the corner and wearing shorts, do you have a preference of good no-show socks that won't fall down? Yeah, I just wrote a post. Uh, it's the latest post on the blog. It's called 10 Warm Weather Essentials, and I recommend a pair of no-show socks um, in that post. So you can go check that out. Um, you know, there, there are a few really good brands for no-show socks. Uh, Falk is a good brand, Taft. Um, but the key is to, uh, you know, you kind of get what you pay for with these things. If you buy cheap, uh, like a 10 pack of no-show socks from like Amazon or something, it might not work out. They might fall off and, and fall apart. Okay. Someone says, let's see, I clean houses for a living. I wear chambray and Oxfords to keep a professional look. Footwear suggestions. Yeah. So you're on your feet all day. You want to be comfortable, but you don't want to look sloppy. Um, yeah, I mean, Oxfords, that's, that's pretty dressy for, for, uh, for that outfit, for, for an outfit that you would wear to clean houses, I would probably go with um, something, I mean, unless you find a really comfortable pair of Oxfords, I'd probably go with something a little more comfortable, uh, like a pair of work boots or desert boots or even like nice sneakers. Um, I mean, I, like I wear van sneakers, they're super comfortable. Uh, you could also wear, um, let's see, for house cleaning, you could also find like there are a lot of dress shoes that are made specifically to be comfortable. Like there's a really cool brand called the Primal Professional, uh, and they make like these like really comfortable dress shoes, uh, but they're also really high quality and really stylish. So you could check them out. Cole Haan makes some uh, very comfortable dress shoes. So yeah, but I, I would I would put you know function over form and and make sure that you're keeping your comfort uh, top of mind, even if you have to sacrifice style a little bit. Okay, Keely, I think that's your name, Keely. Love what you're doing. Question about jean rise and fit. Should the jeans be right up to and hugging around the crotch area, or should there be some room down there? Yeah, so the key is to find jeans that have a longer rise. You're going to want to find like medium rise jeans because if they're right up around the crotch, let's be honest, it's not going to be that comfortable. Um, but if you wear them as low rise jeans, uh, yes, it will make your legs look shorter and that's not a good look for most shorter men. So you should find jeans that have a longer rise and that way you can wear them higher up, but they won't be restricting you too much down there. Henry says, uh, yes, dressing well, the sign of maturity for a young man and definitely makes you seem more caring. Yeah, totally. I mean, people notice this stuff, man. Like if I, I always use the example, like if you if you had to ask someone, if you're in a, a city that you've never been to and you're running late for a meeting and, you, and you're completely lost, as a man, it's already hard to ask somebody for directions. If you have to ask somebody and you have two options, you see some dude in like baggy jeans and flip-flops and a guy in a custom suit, tailored suit, you're going to ask the guy in the custom suit because he seems trustworthy. He seems like a people that people, uh, you know, a type of person that people trust. And, um, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, people make snap judgments about you all the time, every day. And, uh, and a lot of that is based on what you're wearing. 
Okay, Jay says, for a presentation, is a navy blazer with a t-shirt and dark jeans and dark shoes appropriate? That depends, man. So the, the blazer over a t-shirt is a pretty, like, casual, stylish look, and it's that's not going to be appropriate for a lot of office settings. Now, if you work in, like, a really casual, kind of cool office, like a startup or a tech company, that could be fine. Um, just make sure the t-shirt, first of all, it, sh it should be a v-neck. Uh, if, if you're if you're doing that look, not not a uh, crew neck, and make sure it's a really high quality T-shirt. You know, make sure it fits well. Make sure it's not too long, and like you know, don't wear like an undershirt. Like wear like a really high quality T-shirt. That can be a good look. Wade says, could you recommend some jeans that have higher rise? <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, most jean companies have different options. Like they have like some low rise jeans and some high rise jeans. Um, Definitely more low-rise jeans out there right now. Um, some good companies that have like medium rise. Uh, Peter Manning makes good jeans with a medium rise. Um, there's a let's see a new company called Mott and Bow that makes very affordable jeans um, with uh, with a medium rise. Uh, you could check out like Nudie, APC. Like they have a bunch of different cuts. Um, some are are low rise, some are high rise. So jeans are tough, man. Like you have to try on a ton of different jeans. I'd recommend going to like going to the mall, which I don't usually recommend, but go to a place like Nordstrom that has a bunch of different designer jeans and um, you know try like 20 pairs on and just find one that works for you because it's jeans have to fit really well and um, and yeah you're gonna want to find you know the, the pair that not only has the right rise for you but that also fits around the thighs. You know the only thing you don't really have to worry about is the length because you can get them hemmed. Tyler, uh, you say loving, love the hemming your own pants post. Just bought a sewing machine the day before. That's awesome. That is so cool. Yes, there will be more tailoring and alteration uh, posts in the future because that one got a really good response. So I'm, I'm going to try to post uh, a lot more about like DIY alterations. Okay, another question. I failed to understand the formality of the blazer. I always put it just below a suit, and I've never never moved it from that position. How casual? Can it be worn and how dressy? Yeah, blazers. I mean, blazers are pretty, pretty versatile. Keep in mind um, the difference between a blazer and a sport coat. So, like a blazer traditionally is like a navy blue, has brass buttons. Um, it's uh, it's a little more dressy than a sport coat, a little less dressy than a suit. It can still be worn, worn with jeans. It can be worn with different colored trousers. Now, what you're not going to want to do is wear like a blue blazer with blue trousers. You could wear it with you know, tan trousers or gray trousers or brown trousers, but you're not going to want to wear a blue blazer with blue, blue trousers because that just kind of looks like a mismatched suit. Okay, Kevin says, for Peter Manning, are the returns super easy? I want to try their jeans, but usually hate the whole online. Yeah, online returns are a pain. Peter Manning, I believe they still have, don't quote me on this, but I believe they still have free returns free shipping and free returns. Um, definitely try them out. You know, for what it's worth, their jeans fit really, really well. Um, if you look, I have a post uh, called Peter Manning Review, and I'm wearing their jeans, so you can, you can check them out. They're not as, um, like, in terms of, like, the colors and the details, they're not as modern, I'd say, as some other companies, but the fit is spot on. So if you're thinking about trying them on, yeah, I'd... I, I wouldn't let the return process hold you back. I would definitely try them. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you so much for your time. I'm really honored that you would spend an hour with me today. Um, definitely going to do more of these in the future. And uh, check out the class. It's probably going to fill up quickly. It's already started. So, you know, if you're interested, definitely grab your seat now. And, uh, yeah, guys, thanks so much. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I will talk to you soon.